Umar says, what's the Sunnah way of praying the Eid prayer and how to pray the Eid prayer while one is traveling? First of all, Eid prayer is prayed twice a year. In the Eid of Al-Fitr, which comes at the end of the month of Ramadan, and in Eid Al-Hajj, which is on the 10th of the 12th month of the lunar year, the month of Dhul Hijjah. And the format of this prayer is the same. Is it mandatory? Is it a communal obligation? It is, is it a highly recommended sunnah? It's an issue of dispute among scholars. The most authentic opinion is that it is mandatory upon men and it is highly recommended for women. The format is that the Muslims go to an open ground known as al musalla It's an open plaza, open piece of land. Usually it's outside the skirts of the city or the town. And this is what the Prophet used to do, alayhi salatu wasalam. Therefore, praying it in masjids is not the right thing to do. So many Muslims all over the world pray it inside the masjid. But this is not the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We know that praying in the Masjid of Medina is equivalent to a thousand prayers. Yet the Prophet ﷺ did never pray the Eid in his Masjid. He used to take the congregation to uh, uh, Al Musalla and they would pray in the open uh, area, under the open sky. And the way to do this is to offer two rakahs like normal rakahs, but the only difference is that in the first rakah, he offers seven takbirs, and in the second rakah, he offers five takbirs, and the difference of opinion whether the seven takbirs are included with takbiratul ihram or excluded. I'm inclined to follow the opinion that says it's seven and you add these seven to Takbirat al-Ihram. And this is done like so. You say, Allahu Akbar. You read Dua al-Istiftah, which is Sana, as they call it in Urdu. And then you make seven Takbirs. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the most authentic opinion that you raise your hands with every Takbir. And after you finish the seventh one, you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Tazan Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, and you read the Fatiha and Surah Al-A'la, Sabbih Isma Rabbika Al-A'la, afterwards. This is one of the surahs prescribed. And then you make your ruku' your two sujood, and you stand up, saying Allahu Akbar, and then you recite five takbirs after that. So you say, Allahu Akbar, raising your hands, and then you recite Fatiha, Surah, and you continue your prayer as usual. After the Imam finishes the prayer, he goes and delivers one speech. And this is an issue of dispute. Scholars differed. Some of them said he offers two speeches and he sits between them as in the case with a Friday sermon. But this is not authentic because all those who reported it, stated that the Prophet gave one speech alayhi salatu wasalam. And beside, th when he gave the khutbah, the sermon, the scholars, uh, the companions did not take his pulpit with him. They did not take a chair for him to sit down. So claiming that he sat down between the two sermons would require some place to sit and it's an open area. Where would he sit? So this again shows that it was only one sermon. And after that, at the end of it, he would address the women and encourage them to give charity, either by going there physically or nowadays because we have the loud speakers, one can do that in the same sermon and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. As for praying it while traveling, it is recommended for a traveler to pray it, but it is not mandatory as Congregation prayer for him is not mandatory as well.